All right. All right, good. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> right, let, me, let me drink some water. <coughs> let me drink some water. Lower the voice by a few oct octaves. It'll sound a little cooler and deeper. <coughs> Welcome to the Far Kingdoms podcast, where we talk trash about our D&D &D campaign and the characters in it. I'm Albert. And I'm Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hey. Uh, one of our party members called us out when they listened to the podcast, saying that it's a podcast about shitting on people. Well, you know what? That's exactly right, all right? It's exactly right. You know, and we're not, we're not right. saying that because you, you called us out, because that was our intention from the very beginning. It's actually that intro that you just heard. We, it was probably written before anything happened, right? That's it was correct. Like, it was probably written correct. before we even had any idea what this podcast was about. Other than shooting yeah. on people. But, um, I mean, but it yeah. didn't turn out awful. Yeah, you didn't expose us or anything, okay? So, <laughs> just saying. Just, just, put, just put that out there. Hey, you, know who, you know who you are. Anyway, yes. Did you expect all of our party members to actually listen to it? I think you did, but I I hadn't I really didn't think everybody was going to actually listen to it. Well, it's basically if you hear something about yourself or related to yourself, you're going to want to know what it is, right? It's True. like a high school rumor. If you hear a high school rumor about yourself, you're going to know what that rumor is. Like you want to know. I think if I I think if I knew they were all going to listen to it, it probably would have been a little bit nicer. But uh I think I think it's no, too we late set a person. No, no, yeah, we set a person. We set the bar, okay? We set the bar. So we just got to drop bombs to keep dropping bombs. Yeah, we got to keep dropping bombs, okay? Right. You know how much, you know how much improvement we got out of that. We got we got Ryan to stop being Ryan Reynolds and start being his own person. Now, uh -huh. st he's still got the random name, but that's fine. That's honestly fine. I'm okay with that. I'm slowly getting over that. About about Ryan. My immersion is back after seeing that image. Like, I can't look at Ryan Wilson anymore and, and see it as Ryan Reynolds. Every time I see Ryan, I'm like, oh, that, that's a D&D &D character. That's a D&D yeah, &D character. Yeah, for, for context, um, Ryan uploaded a picture and he was like, hey, everyone, I have an amount, announcement uh, due to some comments made in the last podcast. <laughs> I've decided that I don't want Ryan to look like Ryan Reynolds anymore. He's going to look like this badass art I found. Or oh, he didn't say badass art, but if you want to check out that art, join our Discord and click on the art channel. It's right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he commissioned it. What? He yeah, commissioned that's, it? That's, that's an OG. That's an OG. That's O-C-O-G. That's what that, he meant when Ryan. he said that it's from an artist I found? I'm pretty sure, right? Or maybe not. No. Maybe I'm he's misunderstanding. A he's, a, he's a cheapskate. He's a cheese. No way, no way he would spend that much that. money. It might might have been cheap. I don't know. Speaking of uh, characters writing more, um, I was so surprised of the, the somewhat wholesome reception we got from that last one. Like, it wasn't just Ryan who improved their backstories. It was um, Oasis yeah, it was and like Storm. Nearly oh, it was good. Nearly was everyone, good. everyone had something to say. And, like... It was not like everyone was like, oh, I got to write more about my next story. But a lot of people were like, hey, I wanted to clarify this and like kind of clear the waters about, you know, the stuff that we said. I think Maple uh, was like, uh, I think I, I, I mentioned earlier that Maple like seemed too eager to burn down the chapel. And he wrote to us saying that, you know, basically... He wanted to clear up that that's like he wasn't being a psychopath. He was saying like maybe we just <laughs> silently burn it down and kill the hags, you know. But um, but yeah, and then Oasis with the with the slide in the DMs, mm -hmm. saying like you, mm -hmm. you know she's got some stuff planned or written out. Yep. I'm excited for that. I'm really excited for that. Who and... knew words could uh could fix so many of our. Not exactly problems, but uh, some of the issues we were talking think, about. Who knew I words think, would do such a thing? I think D and D sessions in general do require like an after 
after session talk at least for like a couple minutes and like be honest right that's the main problem people don't want to be honest True. like pe people want to nice. be we want to be, be nice and not you know make anyone feel bad yeah um, people people are afraid to drop bombs but that that is honestly what is holding you back from having the best game that you can yeah um, yeah so in that case we should drop some bombs right well, we'll drop some bombs. We'll drop some bombs. But first, let's, drop... let's talk okay. about the the last session. So session forty one, which we had yesterday. Um, let's let's do a re a real quick recap of what happened. So, um, do you want to do a recap, or shall I shall I do the re recap? Uh, you wrote it out, right? So I'll leave it to you. Okay. So basically, our party departs from Sleepy Wood, the town at the base of the mountain where we killed the hags. And we travel for a couple more days and we come across this river that had a broken stone bridge. You, what was the river's name that you said? It is the Grendel River. The Grendel River that was at the end of the Grendel Plains, right? Correct. Okay. And um, there was a wagon there with a couple of farmers on there. Uh, uh, an older woman and a young looking kid, about 15 years old. The name, the woman's name was Izette, and mm -hmm. the boy's name was Junior. Junior. Is that is that the boy's actual name, or uh, is no. that like no, he was no, named after his, his name. he's named after his father? He is named after his father. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Um, basically, the party figures out how to get across the river. We had some ideas about turning into animals and carrying the wagon across. Uh, some of the more practical members, i.e., Snow Ryan and Tokel decided to just fix the bridge with some wood uh temporarily makeshift makeshift fi fix and um uh we fixed the bridge can uh, i comment on that for a second yes so that was honestly like a really good example of of D, &D. there were so many um suggested solutions to the problems those poor villages were having like I mean, I'm not surprised, but it's still really nice to see. Like, let's summon animals, let's clear the water, let's uh, make animals into a bridge. <laughs> and then, well, what really what really uh, tickled my fancy was that the players, or well, some of the players, I think Ryan, um, maybe Snow as well, specifically, were actually thinking about the, the future of the bridge and not just the immediate issue of uh making a more permanent solution in case the uh the, the travelers wanted to come back across the bridge or something of the, along those lines that actually really surprised me because i wasn't even thinking of that like at that point yeah so that was really you know cool you know what storm said to that he was like do we care do we care about that and i was like dude you're not getting immersed you're not getting immersed that's his character that's his character it's a version it's a version he, he'd probably say something like that maybe but yeah no. a bridge a bridge is a very important part of an economy because if you can't get across a river that you can't cross normally you can't trade you can't trade so fixing that bridge at least for the time being i don't know how long our shitty ass wooden planks are gonna hold i think it for. turned out pretty well actually with the rolls you guys got okay well that's good yeah yeah you're saving those villagers uh money the did purses you, did you have like an idea how that bridge got broken and did you expect the, far, the party to snoop around for clues regarding that uh yes i did and ryan did investigate but i think he rolled like a six or like okay. something really so low there was something to that okay there was definitely something to that but it doesn't really matter in the long run or does okay. it anyway continuing with the recap we fixed the bridge is that um i should also mention that uh storm took a liking to junior um basically singing limericks and things like that mm -hmm. um to junior really lewd limericks and if i can comment on that uh sure. that kind of goes back to our conversation about building relationships with npcs because by the end of the session he was willing to kill someone for that kid <laughs> he almost and killed somebody he almost he kid. almost did he almost did so oh man not to say i told you so but uh i told you so I mean, I didn't threaten the kid's life. I just, uh, but that's what I mean. Did. That's what I mean. When you have an investment in that type of relationship between a player and an NPC, it can go a long way. 
That's all I'm saying. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I agree with that. I agree. With anyway, that. before this takes a full hour to finish the recap, I will continue. Please continue. So, Izet offers to give us a ride on her wagon um, for a couple more days until we reach the next town called Venture. Meanwhile, she's talking about how she has another son called Igma who goes to the College of Huria, one of the moving cities in the desert. Um, and she says, she's talking about, you know, how how much it costs to go to um, the college or how much it costs to enroll him into the, the courses and the tuition fees, which was about 10 gold a month, which yep. he sends to him every, every month um, via his uncle, Morn, who we will touch on soon. Oh, we will touch on him um so we get to venture um also i should add that uh junior is salty that he can't go to college uh one because they're too poor to send him to college and two he has to take over the the family farm back in scepter the port town yeah. that they come from yeah and he is not too keen on that um, but it's a family farm understandable right but Storm's like, this kid should have an opportunity to do what he wants to do. And while I can definitely um, understand Izette's hesitation to that, I mean, it's a family farm, which we can assume they've had for a long time, generations. Yeah. And for that to have no heir, um, you know, in a bunch of farmhands, I can definitely see the, the, sen the sentimentality side of that of her farm I, going away i think it's not just that i think what else was holding her back is that th it's just salvation offered at the hands of pretty much strangers well you're exactly strangers oh yeah yeah that's true i didn't even think about that but that's true that's like we just met them like half an hour ago yeah and storm's already trying to be like angel capitalist what are they called? Angel investors? <laughs> I don't. I've. I don't know. Whatever the fantasy equivalent of that is. But yeah, um, the party has think, cash to just sorry, throw away. Ahead. Do you think that if the party didn't have uh, cash to just kind of shell out, like like nobody's business, they they'd still do the same thing, or storm in particular? They de They definitely would try to find a way to get this kid into college, or find a way to make the money. To get this kid in the college mm, i agree i agree i definitely think there would be an effort made there and i definitely think that would have heightened the dilemma a lot more i think that would have been a good role play bait to have out but we're super rich so it doesn't matter yeah. you guys you guys are ultra rich right now um so we get to venture um you know have a look around the town for a little bit see the train station i say train station but it's really a city station it's a ship for when, station. For when the sit the, the the massive fucking city arrives. Uh, by the way, the city of Huria is on the back of this gigantic tortoise mm -hmm. or territories, as you call it. Mm -hmm. Um I believe the city is called Huria. Do they name and, and the animal is called the anim Huria. The animal is also Huria. So yep. Huria City is on top of Huria, the turtle. That's correct. Um, um I want to ask something. I know I'm. I know I'm. Not, this this yeah, this uh, recap's gonna take forever, but we're we're gonna drop bombs, right? Yeah. And that's not that's not just on the party, but that should be on me as well as the DM. Oh, it should be on. I it should be on us too. Yeah. Do you think I could have done the description of the um, the giant tortoise with a city on its back better? And if so, how? Um, I think for the most part it was good. Um. I think for the most part it was good. That's I'm just good to trying to remember what you said specifically. So you're can saying you, it's not memorable. Hey. Can you can you refresh my memory? Oh, you want me to read it out again? Oh yeah, read oh, it out. Mind. Read it out. Uh so I usually write the description of things like this, but I usually end up butchering it in session. <laughs> so I'll I'll read you the, the non butchered version. Okay. So this was about when the party it was it's like hitting nightfall and you see the you see the shell coming over the horizon that kind of thing. So this might take a lot, but here we go. <clears throat> the sand shakes beneath your feet, subtle at first, but it grows in intensity as time passes. The horizon seems to go beneath the moonlight, before the 
Lips of blue begin showing through the darkness, getting brighter and closer. The other, the other seem nonchalant about the spectacle, only moving their hands over their ears. The beast grows closer, its full form finally visible. A colossal tortoise, its body reaching high into the sky. The body of the beast dwarfs the little town of Venture, its majestic and ancient head reared proudly as it encroaches closer to the small town. The massive, elephant-like feet cause the earth to quake beneath. The more experienced hold their ground, while the others clearly none too confident, and they find seats. A city perched on the edge of the tortoise's pr prodigious shell glitters, hmm? glitters in awe-inspiring azure. Ah, yes. The backdrop of the city, which the peaks of a spine of mountains run down the center of the giant. Now close enough to cover the entire sky, the wind whips up, causing sand to fly sporadically. The maw of the towering titan opens, letting out a deep, deafening roar as that brings the sand and air itself to vibrate before the leviathan digs down into the earth itself. The only remaining visible features, the shell and the contents atop it. A large waterfall can be seen flowing down the shell into the large pits of sand below. So that's pretty much what I wrote, but what I said was something something completely different. Like It wasn't even close to that. Yeah, like, I think no. it probably would have been better if you described how the terror toys moved more because i i believe a long time ago when we were talking about these moving cities um which there are three um i believe they don't walk on the sand they actually kind of swim through it yeah they kind of swim yeah so the the head of the the tortoise is like somewhat submerged you could even say it's a turtle it's got it's got feet so it's a tortoise <laughs> My head cannon has got feet. But, like, I'm thinking that it's like, um, it's kind of like a crocodile, how it swims. It can swim with, like, its head slightly above I'd water. I'd say it's a little more elevated than that. So you can actually see its legs kind of moving, although, how, like, they're kind of a bit submerged. Yeah, I think the description would have been better if you had described the movement of the tortoise in more detail. Okay. More okay. detail. To like, okay. I think you've got the size there and the scale and like the effects that it's making. But like definitely I think what have would have made it pop was like actually describing the movement itself. Okay, okay. I think that would have enhanced it. But other than that, I really don't see a problem with that. I like I like the blue crystal thing. That I think that's the first time we're hearing of that. I believe a long time ago, like at the start of the campaign itself, like two years ago now, you mentioned that there are airships in one area, and they're they're powered by something. And this is the this first is the time. one. This, this is the, the first one. time we're we're seeing the airships, and they're powered by this blue crystal. But anyway, we're getting off track. Back Sorry, to the yeah. continue, continue. So. Um, we get to Venture, and there's a, there's a mail, the post office. I'm the postage saying, office. Yeah, yes. the postage office, right? And all the party members pretty much go in there, almost straight away. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, Tokul gets a letter from a long-lost love, or infatuation, or crush, should we say? That's a better way to describe it, yes. Um, so, long time ago during like the first 10 sessions um Tokul slept with a pro prostitute named Sugar and every now and again Tokul will bring up Sugar and yeah, he he'll thinks, reminisce and he'll think like he'll think about her very lovingly um but we all know it's just an infatuation you know you're Vincent van going all over the place Tokul stop um True. so and the thing with that which I thought was weird I, can I can I jump in for his defense here? Sure. To be fair to Tokul, I I think it was not a lot, but there was a there was a medium sized amount more than just them sleeping together in the brothel, right? Like there was the uh, the mansion where you guys saved her life from the um the Baron who was holding a dagger to her throat, and she joined you on your journey all the way to Guildford. I think I think it was more than just like a one night's love thing. Can I can I? Real talk for a second. Yeah, counterpoint me. I don't remember any of that. I just remember that. <laughs> can, I, can I refresh you then? Yeah. All right. I, it's coming to back. It's coming back to me as you tell me that. 
context. So they were in this town, and the Baron was an evil guy, and then the Baron, they find out he's an evil guy, and the Baron threatens Sugar by holding up, like, a knife to her neck. And Snow at the time had this magical arrow that teleported him uh, wherever he shot it, and it was only one use. So he shot it, like, behind the Baron, and then he, and he stabbed the Baron in the back, saving, saving, the, <laughs> saving Sugar. I and remember. then she, she joined them for a while. I remember that because I had just gotten that arrow and I used yes. it straight away. Yes. And I remember and was <laughs> I remember Sieg, Eisen's previous character, the pre yep. the character before Eisen, same player though, um, was very was very cross with me that day because he thought we wanted to keep the Baron alive so we could question them. Um But yeah, I do remember that. I do remember. I, I vaguely remember her coming with us but i definitely remember saving her from the baron yeah yeah i remember that so it's more than just falling in love with the okay the prostitute okay but in we still defense. we defense. still don't know that she likes him right oh yeah she i don't i don't know if she ever liked him oh <laughs> all right sorry gotta, continue, gotta, continue. Gotta, gotta kill him like that gotta <laughs> kill him like that sure continue um so he he gets a letter from her updating him on all all the stuff that's happened since then um basically some characters that we met previously soul tear penny um all of them uh, vincent as well mm -hmm. um i'm not gonna go too far into who they are but basically yeah. they're doing all right or they've moved on um in some way and strangely enough no orc attack on the town why is that? Maybe you should uh, mail mail Sugar back and ask why. So, for context, more context, we ran away from the town, that town, because we heard that there was an incoming orc slash goblin army coming to siege the town, and there was a there was a huge thing about that. There it was, was a huge, lot of them. and we decided to flee. Right, we were like. We were, I believe Vincent was like um, getting us to like he was organizing the defense and we were just like we just yeeted out of there <laughs> we just yeeted out of there oh I saw oh, I think also the duke the duke was like testing us or something and yeah, we he just, pissed we, you guys off we just, yeah. we, just, we, just, we just yeeted out of there after that and we traveled south and this was just when there was just three party members so Snow, Tokel and Sieg a long time ago a long time ago that's, an, that's another podcast story, I think. That's that's a story for another time. Uh, yep. But he gets that letter and he, like, Tokel freaks out because Sugar mentions someone who's been helping the town out or her out personally, yep. um, Hesseldame, who seems to be the, the, the BB, the B, what do you call it? Big, B big B bad B e evil guy? BBEG, big bad right? evil guy. Yeah. He seems to be the big bad evil guy for now. I don't know if you intended him to be as such, but he is now. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really know either. Some things just kind of naturally fall into place. Yeah. He's definitely the 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 guy you guys are seeking to he's the mess guy, over. Right? Uh yep. which is good, right? That's good for the campaign because it Colin unif it unifies the party in that way. Um and yeah, so he freaks out and he's like, hey, we gotta go. We gotta go across the country back again to save my love. But no, nobody, yep. nobody, nobody <laughs> they responds just... to that. <laughs> they sweeped it under the rug. Yeah, they sweeped um, it under the rug. Storm goes to get his letters. He gets three letters. He gets one for him and Ryan. He gets three for him and Ryan. And they're all two from for him and Ryan. Oh, okay. And then he gets one for the party. The one for the party, party. yes. Cool. Yes. Now... It's addressed to the five hives, but I by no means consider that name canon by any means, okay? So, anyway. <clears throat> huh? Hey, it's canon because you guys talked about it in front of him. It's not canon. Anyway, so... The first two letters are basically income that came from the establishments that Ryan and Storm bought out. So, they bought an establishment in a place called Weirdwater, and I believe they bought another place in Trident. Um, which is many months travel away from where the party is right now. Yeah. Um, and they got like, they got shit all money. I mean, 
decent money for a commoner, but shit all money for an adventurer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's money. And, and one of money. and one of them, I believe, the bee's knees got burnt down along with the rest of the town, or just yeah, yeah. so messed up, um, got messed up. Yeah, but that's also a story for another time. Won't get into that. And then finally was a a, a very heartfelt message from Cregan, who wrote all the me- the letters to us, or well, not all the letters, but those three letters that Storm picked up, um, who was a tavern owner in trident um and we have a lot of we have a lot of history with that guy but yeah we'll get into him later if it comes to a context and yes. basically what what did the letter say exactly um here let me i have it right in front of me just the end part yeah the ps listen here you don't have to waste your life chasing death there's nothing cowardly about putting down the blade and deciding the adventurer's life isn't for you the elves and I will always welcome you with open arms. I could use another waiter or six. And nobody gets to my employees without getting through me first. PPS. For the love of the gods, right back before I go up to hurry myself to make sure you fools didn't drop dead in the Korakine. And ah. Ends, uh... ah. So wholesome. So wholesome. But what was the, the main body of the letter about? Just to summarize. It just kind of addressed each little group of the party members. It added a, some more plot relevant oh, hints. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I hope, I hope you guys picked up on. There was something you guys missed, which I'll go into a bit later. I have I have a comment about the letters in general, but we should get through all the mail first. The the in-game mail, all right? Not the podcast mail. <laughs> oh, please, yeah. please, please send us podcast mail. <laughs> please. <laughs> please, we're so lonely. Hey, please. Um, so next was, I think, Maple. Who got shit tons of mail? Shit tons popular. of mail. He's popular. Uh, we should also mention how the mail is brought out to the party. So basically, there's this guy who goes around the back, and there's a magical flash, and then he comes out with the letters. If you have any, you just say your name, and then he goes in the back, magical flash, and he comes out with the letter. Um, so that's that's a really cool way of kind of explaining away how the letters <laughs> come to the party. I'm okay with it. I'm honestly fine with that because it would be impossible if you didn't have that. It would yeah. be impossible. If you just pulled it out of a drawer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's fine. Um, so props on you for explaining that away. Thank you. It's a hand wave, but I think it's pretty acceptable. I think it's pretty fine. It's, it's an in-game hand wave. We're yeah. Good. We're good. So he gets a lot of mail from three individuals. Now he hasn't said out loud what the letters are. Or you yes. haven't given him the context yet? I gave him context. I didn't give him... There's, there's some parts I'm missing that I still haven't written out yet, which is okay. my bad for not preparing for that, honestly. Okay. So he gets a lot of mail, like a lot, right? Basically, you said, like, the, the light just keeps flashing over and over and over for, like, 10 minutes, and he comes there's out a with a stack. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking... What I'm guessing is that there might be someone from his clan um, back in the Crescent Isles like it's like there's a like a message on repeat from these three individuals and it just gets sent out every every so often and that's why he has so many and it's been 200 years since snow and maple left um well were there last right and how many how many letters did uh snow get snow got zero under the name of snow but under his true name yuki he got one one old crusty letter which i haven't opened i haven't opened yet because you haven't written that i haven't haven't written it yet (laughs) you haven't written that either um actually i wanted to i was gonna ask you if i could get the context of content of that letter but i didn't get around to asking you um because i wanted after this i wanted to talk about it in this cast oh you want to talk about it here well i wanted to talk about it after i'd read it but you hadn't written it so we can't talk about it okay all right fine Fine, we can talk about it next time. Um, or yeah, if we if we remember to talk about it, but mm. that's fine. And then Ryan didn't get any, but technically he got he got he got the Storm ones from shirt. Storm, yeah. Um, and then did a, I don't think Oasis did Oasis she ask didn't for check. mail? No, she, didn't, she check. didn't check. Would she have gotten mail? I don't think I'm at liberty to say that. Okay, sure. Um. And Eisen 
got a letter, but I think it was a prank. <laughs> what did that letter say? So you know how people just type out random emails sometimes. Oh yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah, she she got one of those. And she sent out something similar. It was, it was something along those lines. It was a little bit of a prank uh, right. email. It's like texting a random number. That's fine. That's funny because Eisen's full name is like, is like a like a serial number slash model code. Yeah. Because she's a Warforge, right? She's trying to go for that kind of like product product that line. Robotic feel. Um, and I think that's it, right? Am I missing anyone? Little wise, no. No, I'm that's that's just a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so lots to unpack there, or lots to potentially unpack there once we have all the letters written out. What once do you it... think about that in um in like general terms? Like yeah, the whole so this is what, device this is what I wanted. Postage. This is what I wanted to comment on. I think it's great because it actually opens up the world so much more. Yeah, like it has the same effect, um, when I put the fake sources in your law post. A while back, remember when I put those ah, fake books? It makes the world feel alive. It, it yeah. makes the world feel bigger than it is, right? Yeah. Like there's other stuff going on, and it's not just—it's just not happening. It's not happening just around the party. Like there's other stuff happening. Yeah, like elsewhere. time moves on regardless of what the party's doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think like, I think there should be a lot more of that stuff. That would that would raise my immersion Ooh, a lot. Okay, I'm, I'm, let me write that down. Hey, you should have wrote it down when I told you. Huh? The last time we spoke about huh? this, ages hey, ago. Hey, it's coming to fruition now. It's coming to fruition now. Okay, okay. Continue. Continue. So, afterwards, we kind of chill for a bit. I don't think anything happens. Some of the players go shopping for a little bit. Um, other players just um, just chill for a bit. Just chill, yeah. Then the city arrives. Um, you can go back to the description that we read out earlier. I won't go into that mm. now. The city of Huria arrives, and some the only way to get on the ship is to um, get on an airship. Get it on an airship, and that docks at the airship station or the train station, which is what I like to compare it to. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, uh, but in order to get on the airship, you need to pay a fee of what was it, a hundred gold? We managed to talk it them began at a hundred gold. Storm managed to talk him down to 50 gold and like I believe Oasis turned into a wasp after <laughs> after all of that. That might be one of my favorite parts. She turns into a wasp and just flies up. Yeah, because there was this like, I don't know, like 20 minutes or 15 minutes of like bargaining and talking and like right at the end she's like, I turn into a wasp <laughs> and everyone just busts out laughing. It was so great. From a, really like from a role play perspective, I don't see a problem with like spending all that time bargaining and that stuff it's fine but from a player time-wise perspective that's a lot of time wasted that's a lot of time that we use mm. up just haggling that doesn't add to the overall experience of the session i guess that's true yeah i mean you guys are now under the guise of um scholars or something along the sort whatever lie storm weave do you guys into sure but we're also fucking loaded so True. there wasn't yeah. really any need to bargain that much without hurting our purses too much. It's the old, it's old habits coming, coming back. Um. So eventually, everyone pays their fee or gets on one way or mm. another. They get onto the ship, and I believe this is where you introduce some new characters: a blue I dragonborn yes. and her yes. pack. Her, yeah. What are the, what, are, what did you call it? Pack mates. Her pack mates. So if you want to, so, if you want to take Should I go into context about that for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, go for it. So Dragonborn in my homebrew continent of Axia work a little bit like wolves where there's, there's pack mates and everyone has this pecking order and it's all about um, respect and whoever has, whoever's the biggest or has the most respect around everyone else. Um, because their, and, their culture revolves around this great hunt, yeah, right? The great hunt or just yeah. the hunt. Yeah. Which is just the pursuit of literally, really anything. It's just this one single-mindedness pursuit of something. Right. Yeah. And so I introduced this character, which no, this is the, this is the part where I where I uh, where I get to drop some bombs. Okay. Sure. And so I introduced a character 
called Clestal Norixius. Clestal Norixius, right? yes. And she happens to share a last name with somebody mentioned in the letter addressed to the party. Oh, and nobody picked up on that. I missed that, to be honest. I missed yeah. that. Yeah. But so, uh, in my defense, connection I was I was lagging a lot in the last half of that session, and I You're wish I wasn't. Lagging a lot. I wish I wasn't. So, but I think I think we can consider in real life sessions soon. I think in the coming weeks because second wave we'll we'll coming we'll down. See how the climate, the climate changes. Yeah, I mean it's spring now, um, so hopefully. We can get into real life sessions soon because my internet cannot take it anymore and neither can my sanity i was actually thinking about the uh the benefits of doing it online you know other than the the ease of it i actually wanted to try test out a voice changer <laughs> like this session Ooh. but i was like you know what nah just just leave it out for now you should have you should have because that's like one of the very few things they like want one of the very few advantages you have Although electronic, although Toko would be laughing too much. Yeah, he, he might he, have taken them out. He, he laughs too much when he does, and he's not on mute, and that takes me out of the immersion. When he's trying to like, when everyone, someone's doing trying to do a serious bit, he just laughs randomly, and that just takes me right out of the immersion. And I'm like, hey, don't laugh. I try to get a burst. <laughs> yeah, he, he had some good parts this session, though. There were so, some. Should we continue? There were some good parts. So c yeah, continue. Uh, was it click? Clixius? Clixius? Oh god, it's Clestal. 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 Uh, Clestal. Uh, yeah, they, they intermingle for a while and then. Wait, she can, just you, says, can you can you just sorry? clarify how is she mentioned in that letter to the party? What? That was someone with the same last name as her, Nerixius. And that was the same person Cragen was pointing um, Oasis towards, which is one of her, one of his old um, party members. Right, and this was—was was it her, or it was someone with the same last name as someone her? Someone with the same last name as her. Right, and so I guess it is kind of hard to pick that, pick up on that. Honestly, Oasis was like falling asleep as she usually does, um, in the online sessions. I don't blame her. It's it's a weekday, and she's probably tired. Yeah, I'm not feeling weekday sessions to be honest. It's just yeah, I got after it's like passes my bedtime, I just like shut off. That's fair. That's completely understandable. Um, it doesn't make me any less hurt. It doesn't make any less less hurt. Hey, you be hurt. Be hurt. Be hurt. Be hurt. Anyway. Oh, be hurt. Go on. Um, go on. We keep going on stupid tangents. And I did. I did mention she. Uh, she was. She had a different figure compared to other Dragonborn. She was much taller and uh, like wider. She was like eight and, feet tall, right? Yeah. And total so seven I mean, foot. Yeah, if someone else wanted to pick up on that and connect some dots, I'd be glad. But, uh, Wait, what, I, I what, dots, should... what dots are there to connect with her height and girth? So, uh, Kragen's a Goliath. Huh? And, uh, oh. you have some party members. But, Uch okay, that... in the party's defense, you haven't established if interspecies breeding is a proper thing. It is now. It is okay, but you need to you need to say that in session. You need to like, or either either have it be a big reveal that Clistal is Goliath. It's Clistal, Clistal, it's Clistal. And uh, yeah, we'll get to it. I expect you guys. Well, I expect a um, future meeting and stuff will go down. Then, I mean, Rio was same part of the same party. No, uh, yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was part of that party. It was Kragen, Rio, Clestal, and one other person. Wait, Clestal, the Dragon Ball we met. No, not, not Clestal, the um, uh, the other no, one. It's no, the same okay. last name. Write that name down. I keep fucking that up. Write that name down. All right, all right, all right. The name is Sikroth. Sikroth Norixius. And write write Clestal's name down as well, so I can read it. Clestal Norixius. Oh my gosh! Like that. It's. It's almost unreadable. It's the same last name. Norixius. So is uh, Kragen, yeah. Kragen's last name Norixius, or do Dragonborn, no, no. do Dragonborn inherit their last names from their mother? You're gonna have to find out in session. Yeah. Have you have you established that Dragonborns are are a patriarchy or a matriarchy? 
Uh, it changes. It depends. Well, it's just whoever has the most respect. Right. Okay. Um, like gnolls who are patriarchs. I mean, matriarchs. Sorry. Right. I, so I wish, I wish we went down that knoll path, by the way, but that's another story. <laughs> Where was I? So yeah, Clestal. So I think you established while Toka was talking to her that she's his aunt. Yes, she is old enough to be his aunt. Is Which this, isn't really saying Is it much. one of those Asian things where, like, you just say an older woman that you don't really know? Auntie? Yeah, it kind of is, yeah. Okay, yeah. that wasn't well established so it's either. Not, it's because not I blood. thought it's not blood. I thought... I'm pretty sure everyone thought that this woman was They were his literal? Aunt. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I guess, I yeah, think I you should have you should have clarified that that's, like... That's just, like, a cultural thing that they do. Yeah. I should actually ask him next time if he's okay with me springing these random NPCs he has prior relations with on him. I mean, I, I think you just got to talk to him and just give him a culture update on the, the Ivory Veil. That's true. Thing. Anyway, um, Kragen, uh, Zikaroff, um, Rio, and Kane, which is the person Oasis is looking for. They were a party of adventurers mm. who are all retired or doing something else now or, or dead. You know, mm. rest in peace, Rio. <laughs> Where were we? Okay, yeah, she she has the conversation, then she says goodbye. We'll talk later. Mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much the end of that. So that's that's just another thread to pull on down down the road if we go down that direction. Okay. All right. So we established that Clestal is not, in fact, Tokul's blood aunt, which explains that. She doesn't know anything that's going on from the Ivory Elf because she probably wasn't even born there or raised there. Maybe. Maybe. Are we on boat ride? Oh, can I ask something about the airships? Yeah. Or your opinion on something about the airships? Yeah. How was the description of that? Was it clear enough? I mean, you had a picture to show us. I think there was... How clear can you get? Well, what about... Because the, the crystals and how they get implanted and how they... Uh, you put magic into I don't them think and they you explained the too much how they get implemented. You did explain a little bit how they work. Mm. Basically, like, was it the bigger they are or like the more powerful they are, the more weight they could they could pull, or uh, something yeah, like it's that. Tied to, it's tied to purity and size, pretty much. Yeah, I think that much you explained, but I don't okay, think cool. you explained too much how they're actually implemented into the design of the. Airships. I think Passage touched on it, like ever so slightly, because I think Eisen Eisen had a big boner for these airships. Oh, I, that's something I was going. I forgot to mention. He is. I'm oh, sorry. She, her character. Oh, that that was really great for me. Her being like ultra excited about airships, just like fanboying over them. That was that was really great for me. Honestly, big ups, big ups for that. That's some good stuff. Mm. Sorry, continue. Sorry, continue. More I just had to get excited there. But yeah, I think description-wise, they they reminded me very much of. Have you ever seen the movie Treasure Planet? No. Oh, you gotta watch Treasure Planet. Okay, find the time to watch Treasure Planet. It's an old animated Disney movie, and it's got airships and shit. Ooh. Okay. To be honest, I kind of based the design off of um. What's the Forbidden Desert <laughs> with the crystal right, that gets implanted right, 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 into right, the right. ship? Yeah, it's kind. Of, it's kind of like that. Kind of like that. Uh, for anyway. those who don't know, Forbidden Desert is a board game where you try to survive in a forbidden desert, and you it build an forbidden. airship. Yeah. Anyway, so God, this is a long ass recap. We are. This is pretty much. This is pretty much the whole podcast. We talk. We we're gonna go through it, and then we'll stop every every now and then, I guess. So we. Fly up the airship. Yep. We get to Huria. Turns out we've got to pay another fee to get inside the city itself. Not too bad. Turns out the fee is based on how fucking loaded you look. Yeah. So, I think that's fair. That's not fair. It's not fair. I think that's fair. It's not fair. It's a fun gimmick, but it's not fair. It is not fair. So I think Snow got in with a 10 gold fee. Um, so it looks pretty rich, but not that rich. Um, I think everyone got through with 10 gold, except for Storm, who managed to haggle it down to 8 gold, I think. And Maple. Um, oh, and Maple. 
Oh, Maple was 10 silvers because he looks homeless. <laughs> Toko, on the other hand, with his full plate of mail, plate mail, uh, I mean, he got I, 50, I had to pounce on that. 50 gold. 50 gold. And that, 50 that, gold. that remark on how he looks rich in his plate mail comes up later as well. Um, so we all get it. I had to it. pounce on it. Sorry, I had to pounce on it because he specifically pointed out how shiny his his plate mail was. Oh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Because it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Tokul, he was the one showing it off. Hokul has a bad habit of putting his foot in his mouth and saying things that make him worse off than <laughs> they're better off. But I think that's just a part of the, his that's character's the role play. And it's really, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but you, Sorry, it, you're getting screwed for our amusement, so good for us. Not good for yes. you. <laughs> Sacrifice for the party. So we go to the most redundant name, redundantly named tavern of all time, the Drunken Drunkard. Oh, I love the name so much. Oh, it's so redundant. I love it. I love it. We go to the Drunken Drunkard, um, and basically some of the party orders some uh, rent some rooms. Um, they sit down for drinks. Storm spies someone in the corner of the tavern whose name is Morn, the uncle oh. of Junior and Igma, who Storm is supposed to deliver the, the monthly fee to. Now, I believe Storm was originally supposed to give him the full tuition Six, fees, uh, which was like, yeah, 610. So yep. the monthly fee and like the full scholarship yeah, everything for, 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 for Junior. Yep. Um, I don't know if we mentioned that earlier, uh, but yeah, to uh, it's not Togol. Storm is going to pay for all the tuition for Junior, at least. Because he's just a nice guy, which we'll find out in the next 10 minutes. So all he gives right. it, he gives, he gives Morn only 10 gold because I think he sniffs, he's a bit sus on Morn. He's, he's, Morn's this drunken dude. Um, drunken, smells like piss, slurring his words but that, that kind of drunk. The, the smell of piss might actually be the beer itself which is often described as piss in huria huria ah, yes. is not well known for its alcohols which are all bad at least for the sailors only for the sailors right the sailors um so he gives morn the 10 gold and then shortly afterward morn uses that money and offers to buy the whole tavern drinks with that money the money that was supposed to be for ikima's oh. tuition for that month and that that sets off storm that sets oh, off storm there is when i said it i could see i could see the visible change in his face <laughs> oh man. you could see him die That's a little right. inside before you know the yeah. the switch before turned it all on. goes down sorry continue, continue. so storm tries to beat him up at first and then he takes him outside and he flips his also infamous coin oh, yes. uh, and decides to kill Morn by slitting his wrists and letting him bleed out in the alley. But Toko, <sighs> Toko wasn't having this. He's trying to get in Engvir's good graces. I don't know how genuine he's being here, but he's making an effort. Got to give him that. So mm -hmm. he runs out. And he's like, Storm, what are you doing? And Storm's like, I'm killing him. <laughs> and, I think and, it was a little more serious than that, but yeah, it was in that tone. I'm summarizing. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm and killing him. They, they, Tokel heals him, and they get, Storm and Tokel get into a little spat. So my character, Snow, walks out and just watches. He doesn't do anything. He just watches. That spectator. Um, and... Basically, Storm is pissed off at Tokel for healing Morn, someone Storm thinks should die. And Tokel's like, no, yeah. no, he doesn't deserve to die. And yeah. Storm huffs back inside and Snow follows him. And Tokel tries to redeem this guy. He tries to find something worth saving in this low-life, good-for-nothing drunkard. And do you want do, do you want to do you want to describe how that oh, conversation man. went? Before I go into this, can I ask what Snow or your opinion on what uh, what Snow would have done with the guy? Well, before I go into that, uh, can you yeah? can you give me your first impressions? What do you think Snow 
thinks about this entire situation just so what i think snow thinks yeah just based off what you saw in the session last night. snow is a very impartial he tries to stay out of a lot of things but mm -hmm. when they do involve him he goes all in he goes all in that's my that's my impression of him so in this specific scenario he would have just hands off just watched okay and if if, th if things went down he would have gone in with them that's mostly right but in this situation yeah. he's actually leaning more towards storm side Ooh. and if you had noticed snow did make a quite a few comments in favor of storm if you remember a little bit a little bit um not too much but yeah snow does not have a problem with this person dying this this particular person dying okay okay so it's tokel He's he is trying he tries his best. He really does try his best to um find some way to redeem this this miscreant, this drunkard, this god awful person who is um uh, we probably should have specified this, but he's taking the money that um Igma, one of uh, Izet's sons, is supposed to be using for tuition, and he's just buying drinks every now and then, just getting drunk. And the reason he says that is because he says uh, Igma got kicked out of the college therefore he doesn't need it anymore and igma is probably dead in a ditch somewhere so what use is the money to him when mm. i could use it to just get drunk every night which is understandable maybe i don't know some people like getting drunk and um storm storm didn't have any of that he's like not nah, you gotta die toko's like no no we can we can save this man or we can we can redeem him or oh and he tries he tries so hard and this man <laughs> This man, uh, Morn, is not taking any of it. He doesn't. He doesn't want anything to do with this. He just wants to take the money and get absolutely wasted. So, if I can interject here, I yes. noticed that throughout that whole exchange, you didn't have Tokul run any persuasion checks, right? Was that intentional, or was that purely you wanted to see how the conversation would pan out? I wanted to see how far it would go. Okay, and. I think this man was very, very, very set in his ways. Were you were you waiting for Tokul to like whip out something expected, unexpected? What? I'll tell you what I was expecting. Even though I know it's a bad thing to to say, what the DM was expecting, I was expecting like some sort of magical spell, zone of truth, or anything of the sort. But no, he just wanted to go uh, all verbal. And if he maybe if there was some crazy like revelation or some kind of god tier argument. That'd probably be a good persuasion role, but it was just, hey, st stop, stop what you're doing. I think it's bad. What I liked most about that, um, it was it was pretty harsh hearing him hearing Tokul get shut down so hard. But I, what I liked most about that is Tokul didn't try to rely on anything or anyone to try mm. and redeem this man. He had some good points as well, though. Now, yeah, he did have some good points, um, although. The argument was futile, and it was it was done before it even started. But I liked that Toku was trying to take a more independent approach, and I would like to see more from Toku. And I think we had this discussion a very, very long time ago when Toku was still being fleshed out as a character. He would often mm. he would often try to fall back on other party members or use you know other means. Um, in order to try and get his way, right? Yeah, it's just um, more like, hey guys, what should I do here? Kind and I, I thought, and I still think this, I think that's kind of lazy. That's kind of lazy. Like, because you're not thinking for yourself. You have, you're, you're deferring the responsibility of whatever it is you want onto someone else to get for you. Which I think is pretty lazy role-playing wise. Which is why I liked this so much that he's being more independent. Because it's really, yeah. it's really helping him build his character role playing wise. Yeah. So I hope so as, as yeah. I hope Sorry, he does go. that more in the future. I'm done. Okay. Thank you for so, attending. So as, so as much as we're dropping bombs on him right now, we are really, 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 really impressed and happy with, with his role play. Right? Yeah, he's come a long way. I wish he would remember to keep up his role playing voice. He forgets every second minute, but and you remind him. It's okay. He's 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 coming along. He's coming along. We shouldn't have to remind him four times a session to bring back his voice, but he's come a long way. All right. 
He's come a long way. I love it. I love him. Oh, man. It, it, I'll tell you that it did hurt shutting him down like that because he brought up some good points. Like, do, do, do you, have you ever loved anybody? And I was like, oh, oh, oh. And maybe maybe there is more backstory there, but it's going to take a little more than that to, to bring it out. So should I just continue the recap? Yeah. So after that argument, uh, Tokul just kind of gives up for a second and Morn just goes back into the tavern. He goes ordering drinks again. And Storm, <laughs> seeing seeing the man he hates so much walk back into the tavern and order drink drinks, he he tries to go up and um, cast a curse on the man. Mm. But Ryan... Ryan, oh Ryan, oh Ryan, I enjoy, I enjoy the role play here, where he's like, this is a bad idea, not because you're doing a bad thing, but because doing so will get us into trouble, mm -hmm. which is a completely different take on 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 the same matter, and it just shows how dynamic the party's perspectives can be, which is really, really, really cool, honestly, and he I tries, mean, <laughs> he tries to grapple. Not to take Sorry, away from Ryan's spotlight here but snow does make that argument quite a bit to yeah, storm yeah. often but yeah that is it's, yeah. it's, it's nice how nuanced some of the views can be. yeah how different some of our views can get yeah. yeah and they try ryan tries to stop him there's a grapple check and then everyone remembers that storm chugged a potion of hill giant strength yeah. right yeah. before he clawed <laughs> right before he clawed the man so uh ryan does not save him he also i believe Storm rolled a natural 20 on the grapple. Oh, escape. yep. Yep. Yeah. So that was... <laughs> Fate told him no. So he goes up, he casts a curse. Morn goes real pale. Uh, he throws up a lot of his... um, A lot of the alcohol. And then he gets dragged back outside where Tokel is waiting again. And... Oh, no, man, I believe, Storm just... I believe no? they, he brings him out the front the first time. And then this time he brings him out the back. And Tokel follows him. Uh, okay. So he he yeah. comes back yeah, yeah. inside after Morn, and then when to uh, Storm takes him out the back, that and then Toko and S Snow follow him out the back. So it's, uh, a, it's a different locale. Yes. Yep. And um, Storm just he takes out his flail, his evil flail that lights up because he's evil, kind of. We'll get into that later. And he just goes down to smash it right into that guy's skull. Mm. And Tokel tries to intercept it. And this is where my DM skills kind of fail me, because I don't know mechanically how something like this is supposed to go down. Well, and I, sorry, go. Yep. D and D five E is designed in such a way that a lot of it is based on DM's discretion. There's no mm. set rule for. I don't think there's any set rule for what happened there and how you should have ruled it. So any way mm. you ruled it is is the correct way you 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 rule it because yeah. they expect you to just make a ruling on the spot. That's how, yeah. that's how D and D five E is designed mostly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always trying to find the most fair solution. And in this case, I'm not sure if I did choose the right solution, but storm didn't seem too upset about how it went down. So what I did was I just said that, um, if storm sees Tokel trying to intercept, he also realizes that there's a chance he hurts Tokel as well, so he kind of hesitates and pretty much loses his uh, his will to, to strike down this man. So he pretty much gets automatically intercepted, and I believe he just argues for a bit more and then goes back inside or something? No, they agree. So Tokel brings up the point that mm. maybe Morn should just leave the city forever. And mm. Snow, uh, sorry, not Snow, Storm seems on board with that. But he's, I remember him saying, if, if I see him ever again, uh, I'm killing him. He I'll did cave he, his face in. He did cave his head in or he something did the, like that. He did the, the Tokel line to the Uvanian merchant. If I Ooh. see you again, <laughs> I'll kill you myself. Hey, that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty cool, um, like mirror, huh? Where it's not Tokel doing that this time. It's it would have been, it would have been cool if it was actual character development, but the context of which that line comes through from Tokel... It just it just ruins it all. It just ruins it all. It's just such yeah, an I impulsive guess. line that it just breaks the illusion for me. Because he literally okay, we're shitting on Tokel now, but we're liter he literally gets resurrected as a new class, as a new person, by the god of honor, redemption. And then he, he says that the very next day. 
that's some that's some sitcom comedy bullshit right there. Yeah, definitely takes away from the if, immersion. If that if a little bit Togel had been that kind of person from the start, and then he slowly had changed and you know had character development, and then it came to this moment, this would have been a ve- this would have been a much more powerful scene, I reckon. I don't. I I'm gonna disagree kind of with that. I'm gonna half disagree with that. I agree that the action he took right after he got resurrected and threatening to take a man's life if he ever squealed, that was probably not so good. I do think it would be something Tokel would do, though. And he just hasn't um, fully accepted or understood the responsibilities that were thrust upon him as a paladin of redemption. And there's this, there's this climb, there's this gradual climb from, from when you guys leave Trident all the way to when you guys hit Huria, where he's kind of learning to forgive, or he's, he's trying to get back into good graces with his god. And this is this is the culmination. This is I don't I don't know I don't want to say the end point because it's probably gonna go further than this, but this is like the fruits of his efforts where he's finally like, okay, this guy is a piece of shit. Like this guy is absolutely awful. This Morn guy, but I'm gonna try and redeem him because that's what my god would want me to do. So I I think it is really good character development. I'm gonna disagree with your disagreement. Because okay. that comment he made to the Ubani merchant, it just seems so out of character to me at that moment. Does it? He said some, like, evil things, but Tokel's never been so outright evil before. He's never said something so full of lo- loathing before. I don't... Like, I'm going to disagree with that and say that it wasn't... The, the intention behind it wasn't, like, malice or evil or anything of the sort. It was just him being edgy. Which is he always does. Tokel's, Tokel's not that edgy. He's not that edgy. Uh, I don't remember him being that edgy. Not a, not as edgy as Snow was at the very beginning. I, I don't believe they, I don't believe edgy describes Tokel. Like maybe in some parts, yes, but to that extent, I don't think so. Okay, maybe I use the wrong word to describe it. I think edgy in the capacity of trying to look cool, right? Because that's something a cool person would say. But then right? that. That is on. That is more less of, in character, of what Tokel would do, and that's more of what the player thought would be cool at the time. So, which leads that leads me back to saying They're kind that, of the same person. They are kind of the same person. So, but, if he would do it as a person, I'd, he'd probably do it as a character, which is why he did it. That's that's what I, that's my take on it. Ah, I just. I just don't see Tokel being that kind of character. He was never that kind of character to me, at least. Mm, I'm sure there's been moments. But... Get in the comments! Get in the comments! <laughs> what do you think? Like, comment, subscribe, please. I need, we need views. Um, Email us. But yeah. Um, so that happened. And we're nearing close to the end of the session here. So, um, we missed do... something. Um, oh, Aizen goes off old... to the... Library and yeah, Oasis, and yes, something that. happens with Oasis. Yeah. Should we go into that, or should we yeah. just... Yeah. Okay, so Aizen, she's always after information, so she gets directed to the library, and she just heads in that direction, which we never got to fully explore because the session had to end, so we'll come back to that. But Oasis, um, she gets dragged to one of the back rooms by the tavern keeper, who also happens to be an air genasi. And Oasis is a and... water genasi. Yes, and so there's some kind of connection there as mm. being close to nature or whatever. And the Ejinasi says, "What are you? What are you doing here? You you can't you can't just show your face like that. There's there's this giant bounty or a bounty mm. on all water Janassi. Yeah. And she just kind of covers her up a bit and just uh, gives her this this card that leads to a guild of some sort, and just kind of leaves her there. <laughs> kind of just like, all right, yeah. see ya. I'm going back to my tavern, kind yeah. of thing. And we didn't really get past that point either i don't think we never got to explore that before the session ended do you mm. agree um yeah i think i think oasis was just taken off balance by that and she didn't really know how to respond which is why and then you had to switch to another character mm, i want to talk about that in depth a bit later if we have time about the character switching or about that yes that scene? The, the character switching okay the character switching yeah um, and then should that, we just go back to Storm? Yes, yeah, so... 
What do you want to talk about with Storm? Oh, just the, just the whole Morn debacle. And what do they decide to do at the end? So, basically, <clears throat> to cap it all off, the last thing that happened in that session was Tokul um, picks up Morn's unconscious body and or weak body um, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, is deciding on how he's going to get him out of the city. And we briefly touched on it. He'd have to try and sneak him out somehow past the guards. Yes, the plate armor covered man is going to have to try and sneak out after. And he looks towards the rogue. He looks towards <laughs> Snow. And he's like, Snow. And he's like, I'll help you. Just shut up. I think that's a really good, like, bro moment, right? Like, good character development. Like, these guys are still in it together, regardless of what they decide kind of moment. So that was kind of hot, heartwarming to me. Um, yeah. Think so? Yeah, I think, and that, that kind of plays into Snow's impartial. Even though he was more in favor of this guy dying, he's still willing to help out and support yeah. Tokel's decision because he's trying to support Tokel as a character. That's more me trying to support this side of Tokel more and also Snow trying to support in, in character, like Tokel Tokel's, more. Tokel more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I am a, I am, as a player is trying to support the other player, and the character is trying to support the character. So, oh, it's so nice to see, especially if you compare it to some of our earlier sessions. <laughs> oh god, where everyone just kind of hated each other. Oh yeah, it was that, like that's another podcast. <laughs> that's like, I remember my description for the party. Like everyone just tolerates each other. <laughs> Nobody really oh, likes each other. Uh, my dream is that the characters have like genuine friendships like they're depicted in like something like critical role like all mm. the characters in that party genuinely seem like they're proper friends right they're not just like acquaintances that we've been traveling with for a long time yeah um can i can i talk on that a little bit can i speak yeah, on yeah. that go, go, go. Go, go. so jeff stop the tangent yeah so um i wish some of i wish um we we've probably we're starting to get on the right track with like the player engagement and things like that. I wish there was more just talking like casual talking between the players, um, about like their backstories and like, you know, um, just, just talking to each other as characters and learning more about each other and, and connecting instead of like, let's just do stuff together. Like, like, I thought T Storm and Tokel were, like, off on that path, but all I realized that they were doing is, all they are doing is going together and just, they're just wrecking shit. That's it. There was no, there was no relationship or, or real, like, bonding moment I could see there. It was just like, they're the Chaos crew. That's it. That's all they are. And I wish there was okay. more, like, genuine connection between the characters, like, more personal connections. And I, I really hope... One of my, one of my repressed hopes is I hope that like Snow and Maple have like a bro relationship. Like, Aww. Hey, you know, we, we've been through the same shit, you know, let's snow gang snow, you know, snow elves got to stick it out for each other, but I'm hoping the same thing is, I'm hoping the same thing happens between Tokel and snow as well. Well, it, it sort of is like that, but I think snow is in such a way that he doesn't respond well to Tokel's antics. I don't think he ever has. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just, just him. That's point. just a personality clash at this point. Um, but yeah, I'm, I just hope that the party becomes genuine friends down the line. Like I want to, I want to shoot for critical role. That's like the peak. And I want to get like at least 50%. I want to get halfway there. Hey, hey, we can't just be critical role. You said this last time. That's why, that's why, no, I said we could be critical. We're going to be the next critical. Okay. Huh? No, we can't. We're going to have our own strong. sponsorships. NordVPN, D&D Beyond, sponsor us. <laughs> All right, right, Shadow Legends. Um. <laughs> um, I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. And I think the only advice as a DM I could give to kind of uh, further that point is, maybe not advice, but it's just my hopes that I want the characters to genuinely be curious about one another. Does that make sense? Yeah, like so, so that they should be questioning, like, have, where have, did you come from? Have initiative to 
initiate the role play or initiate the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It might just be a clash of expectations, though, you know? Like, maybe some people just want to do the quest and fight bad guys. Well, we got to enlighten them, okay? We're enlightening, <laughs> we're enlightening you right now, okay? If ah, yes. We want everyone to roleplay more. To speak up. To speak up. Uh, but it, it, minded. It, is, it is a little bit, I will say it is a little bit difficult now that we have seven players to try and get your piece in. Um, and there, there are more players such as, you know, Storm and, you know, Storm and Ryan who are more inclined to, uh, start role-playing stuff. But I would, I would love, all you gotta do, if you wanna, if you wanna get your piece in, is just speak up. Just speak up. Yeah. Whenever there's like a, a moment silence, if you have something, you speak up. Say, I wanna do something, I wanna say something, I turn to this character and I say this. And I start a conversation. I mean even if there isn't a moment silence and you want to butt in, you just butt in. Because that's what you would do in kind of real life as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So if, if I'm, if the DM is saying something, just, just, if you think it's important, just, just fucking go for it. Yeah. That's my advice. I, I don't, I don't really care. I do that sometimes. I say, me. like, either I'll, like, cue it up. I'm like, I, I want to do something after this happens. Or I just say, hey, can I, can I interject here? I want to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. And 99.9% .9 of my answers every time is okay. There's, there's, I don't think I've ever really said no to someone wanting to do something. Yeah. Well, sometimes. I mean, obviously, time. don't don't step on other characters' spotlights when yeah. they're having it. But also, all the characters got to be mindful that you know we all got to let each other shine. And if we're yeah. if we're hogging the spotlight, if we're all like you know not giving each other room to shine, then there's gonna be some part party members that are gonna be. Uh, neglected or possibly underdeveloped because they don't have enough uh i want to say screen time um but yeah. yeah again it goes both ways right you have to you have to have the courage to speak up and um engage yourself in the role play right yeah you have to be genuinely interested in one another not just the campaign and that leads into another point you they gotta you gotta have some some meat on your backstory you gotta have some oh, meat. Okay. You gotta have some meat on your backstory, because yeah, if you're not to sink your teeth into, if you're not gonna talk about stuff that's happening right now, the easiest thing to fall back on is stuff that happened to your character in the past, uh, family members, friends, um, what you liked when you were younger, what sort of things do you miss, um, did you have any love interests? Um, speaking of love interests, I have, I have huh? a, I have a. I have a, a, a hot take. Or not a hot take, but like I have a thing with snow. You have a take? But I've been thinking about it for a long time, but I've never actually explicitly said. Where are we going with this? Um, but yeah. Um, just write, and I'm speaking to the party, if you're listening to this, which I hope you will be. Um, yeah, yeah. Just get a piece of paper or laptop write down a bunch of names and maybe write a couple sentences of who they are and what do they mean to your character that's all and then yeah. um if you're good enough at improv you can just improv the rest and it doesn't even really have to be like a conscious effort like for me personally i just kind of daydream sometimes and if like a good idea comes to my head i'll just write it down yeah 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 you, so it, you, does, it doesn't have to be like one moment yeah just, if something just think about if it. if something comes up with your character's backstory just add it just add it because I do it all the time and I think I annoy out the hell out of Albert because I'm always adding shit to my backstory even though we're never going to touch on it ever okay <laughs> I just I keep, One day. I keep adding shit to the backstory and like snow of culture and stuff like that because it helps me be more immersed and it helps me ground snow as a character now I'm not I'm not saying that you got to write essays and all this shit like I have done for my character, but at least think about it. Like, at least think about your character as a person that lives in the world, right? Yeah. They didn't just start existing when you pl started playing D&D. They always existed, which kind of yeah. goes into your point you made last podcast about thinking about D&D as more, uh, more than a game. Yeah. But again... It's it, yeah, you, it just kind of goes into the um, just separating yourself from the character. It just helps in that aspect, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, go. Uh, I was just about done. I was about done. Okay. Can we go back to that weird thing where you said you had something to talk about and then you just completely skipped over it? Can we go back to that for a second? Okay. Huh? I don't know when I... It's not like I've been dying to talk about this, but this is something that has been on the back of my mind since the very beginning. Or not... Since... Yeah. Since towards the start of the campaign. And it's not relevant to anything. Really. It's just some random thought I had in the back of my mind about Snow. Okay. I low-key think Snow's gay. Really? Yeah. Huh. I did not get that vibe. But... Interesting. Just because... But sexual orientation shouldn't be, like, something that defines your character. It should be just something that's there. That's a part of your character. Yeah. Yeah. Like a subtle trait. Yeah. I think Snow's gay. Okay. I think he's low key gay. I haven't I haven't set that in stone, but I'm think I think he's low key gay. And he he probably had some feelings for the prince, like romantic feelings. Huh. That kind of makes sense. But I want to make a counterpoint. There was this moment where I think Snow had interest in a female character at some point. Which one? Do you remember Faye? Faye? She was this older woman you rescued from a mountain, and she was the leader of all the little peasants you were leading around through the forest. Yes, I do remember, but I and I th I think I think you're just seeing that you're misinterpreting things there, because they're mm. definitely I do remember there was definitely like some slightly spicy moments, but that was more snow reacting to. Faye's advance did she did you have Faye advance on Snow? No, never. I think Snow showed genuine interest. I think there was a point where you're like, hey, what does she look like? Or like I don't know, I don't know. No, I do remember that. I do long. remember that. I do remember that. But that was just a thing. I think I think he Yeah, I do remember that. But I never intended for Snow to have romantic interest in that. I just think he wanted to try and connect to the representative. Because she was, like, acting as representative for the, the refugees. Yeah. Yep. So he, the face. he just wanted to try and connect with her to... It's It's been a long time, but I'm trying to recollect what my intentions were. Um, And I think, I think it was just a coincidence that... Okay. It, it it seemed that way. I can definitely see how you thought Snow had, like, an interest in her in that way. Okay, okay. okay. But I think that was, that was entirely coincidental. Now that I think that may, Snow might be bi. He might be bi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of that, what is your opinion on um, fantasy relationships, board and role-playing relationships between, I don't know, PCs and PCs or NPCs and I PCs. Think, I think you made a pretty good point when we touched on this topic. When we, I remember we talked about this topic a long time ago and you said like it weirded you out. Like you couldn't separate yourself from the character enough. Yes. And I, I don't know what I said, but now I think if you can, if you can separate your character enough from yourself, like, don't don't fall for your own illusion. You know what I mean? Uh, because I've seen this stuff done tastefully yeah. in D and D. Yeah. If anyone watches Dimension Twenty, there's a shit ton of that, like in character relationships. It's mostly player with NPCs, uh, and I believe Critical Role has had a couple of player on player relationships. Yeah, yeah. And I think it can be done tastefully. As long as you can separate yourselves from the character and that doesn't develop into anything real. But I don't yeah. think that's a re I don't think that's a reasonable thing you can ask of someone who's never experienced something like that before. You know what I mean? Like if who's never yeah. who's never pretended to be in a relationship because I can definitely see someone like having genuine feelings and then being confused oh, because yeah. it's not real. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely just a um, goes from potty to potty. I think it's a depends on the it's, place. It's a comf- comfortability thing and how well you can separate your yourself from your character's persona. And for a lot of people, uh, not pointing a few pink fingers, but hmm? the characters are just manifestations of themselves. So. If you're going that route with your character, which is not a wrong way to roleplay, but again, it's hard to separate yourself from the character. If you do that, if yes, you do that, I agree. and it's probably not like I think personally, it's not a good idea that you try to uh, seriously engage in a fantasy relationship. Yeah. Okay. I think when I said that I was uncomfortable with the prospect and that i couldn't separate myself from characters i think that is one of the issues i still kind of have these days because a lot of the characters that i create both for other campaigns or npcs in general they're just kind of exaggerated facets of my own personality does that make sense i mean they they should be they should be because that's what you know yeah yeah so when i role play them it's like it's, it's kind of me so if, if 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 one of your party members falls in love with one of my characters, I'm just like, huh, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, right. And may, I hope that later on I'll have uh, I'll be more experienced enough to completely separate myself from the character. But I still think at this point, I probably wouldn't be able to do justice to an actual fantasy relationship. Yeah, and I think yet. with fantasy relationships, there definitely needs to be a level of maturity there. Like yes, definitely. If you're doing it, like, as a joke thing or something like that, okay, sure. But it's not sustainable. No. And you need to, like, have a proper maturity to handle that tastefully. Otherwise, it's going to be shit. I think it's going to be shit if you yeah, don't do it properly. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be garbage. It depends on the party. Yeah, it's, it's like the player has to take the character seriously. Their character and the NPC or whoever. Yes, definitely. Um, they have to take each other seriously like in a real relationship and you have to hmm. respect each other there needs to be a level of respect right if you if you're if you're giving a player a relationship just to feed their ego or feed their desire um and you're not into it like you're not comfortable doing that or you're doing that to be condescending that's not the way to go yeah it's not gonna work yeah it's, it's not gonna, gonna work. work like that it's gonna it's just gonna hurt the the, the player the player and the campaign or the dm yeah, yeah or the dm in general so yeah it's definitely okay. a comfortability thing separation thing experience thing yeah something something to think about further down the line once we're all a little better at D D, would you say um i mean it's been two years i feel like i'm pretty comfortable role-playing characters that aren't me Snow's my first character, so there's a lot of me in him. Mm. Um, which, I'm not saying that characters should be completely different from you. You should definitely use elements of yourself in that character, because that, but that's what makes yeah. them believable. It grounds them into reality. Unless yeah. you're some god-tier actor or something like that, you should definitely... Critical role. Yeah, you should definitely... But even then, right? They, A lot of their characters have something that's from them. It's like a piece of themselves, yeah. right? It's an exaggerated yeah. part, like you said. Um, but they're able to, since they're professional voice actors slash actors in general, they can separate yeah. themselves. It's, it's their job to be able to separate themselves. And they do it so well that they have married couples that are in, that are in the, like, real life married couples that are in the party. And those people are having re- fantasy relationships with people outside their marriage couple oh man which is crazy that's, that's when you think about role it. play right it's crazy yes it requires this giant level of trust between everyone at the table yeah trust uh. maturity respect at what point do you think we can call ourselves experienced D players i don't think there is like there's a definitive line and i don't think i can say when because there's a chance we might not ever get there how dare you? This is gonna, this campaign is going to go until I die. Uh, Maybe. Not saying like I'm not saying the length of the campaign. I'm saying that our our uh, maturity level slash 
commitment to the role play uh, slash all these things we might not get to the level that we think it might get to it's it, just it, it might never attainable i know role. critical role is like the god tier s tier right and nobody expects a campaign to be like that but i'm sure there are campaigns that are like that they're just not aren't televised there aren't streamed yeah yeah and so you have the potential to go up there but since it's so high you can some some parties just go so far with the level of commitment that they have so unless unless all the players want to like 100 percent invest and go all out um which i don't expect um yeah yeah which is not an expectation i have uh, because some of the players are still new still kind of so i finding themselves yeah. yeah but five years time same party whatever we may not still i mean that phase of getting comfortable would be over by then and we may not still be at that level that Ooh. we hope it would be oh okay but because it depends on the player's conscious commitment you know what i mean okay all right uh one last thing before we end it I want to talk about the character switching, and then there's one little thing after that. Okay. What is your opinion on the DM switching from character to character constantly? Uh, I think it's fine. I think as long as you're giving each character their spotlight, at least enough for them to fully flesh out what they want to do in that scene. Obviously, you're not going to be able to allocate equal amounts of time to each character depending on what they're doing like one character you want you're not going to allocate like half an hour to a character just buying some supplies while the other character yeah. are having like a heated argument over something right <laughs> yeah so it's definitely you got to gauge it by the seriousness of the scene or the the scale of the scene i should say or the impact of the scene if it's like a very yeah. like relevant scene to that session or that the campaign as a whole like relevant to the main story or the character's backstory definitely should focus on on that more um but if there is like a crucial moment that's unrelated but it's like a it's like a good moment i think you want to keep that going you want to keep the momentum going like say for example oasis had more to say about that that um, conversation she had with the bartender you, you could have kept that going you know definitely yeah obviously if you can't have a scene running for too long otherwise you know that's just not fair to the other players but like if there's a momentum you just like want to keep that going keep that going definitely yeah i think that's my i'm not saying it's an issue but i think if we keep going along that track it really uh well detracts time from kind of everybody else like the motivations behind it is that everybody gets to play right that's 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 yeah. that's the motivation yeah. that's why we do it but in that sense we also take away time from everyone else while we do it and i think that it works well in smaller parties of maybe three or four but when there's seven of us there's there's a lot of i don't know dead time maybe that's not the right way to put it but there's a lot of time where people just aren't doing anything mm. and i don't know if as players that subtracts from your experience because i'm just that i'm the dm i don't really know and maybe i'll ask this to everyone else or maybe they'll just tell me after all when they listen to the podcast yes when they listen to the podcast yeah. but all i can really say is that i think it's just something that's unavoidable parties bound to split up and do their own things and i don't think it's a good expectation to expect that they're all together all the time people are going to want to do their own things and I don't think you can help that. So, um, as much as that detracts from the player's playtime, it also depends on if the other players are engaged with the scene that they're watching. If it's an engaging scene, then it's going to be fun. If you're focusing half an hour on just like buying shit or just, just something that it just doesn't add anything to the session slash campaign or the story at large. Mm. I think you should just cut that down. Just just truncate that. Just say, this happens. You describe it. You buy the shit. Move on. Yeah. Yeah. So there doesn't need to that, be... That's a, fair, that's a fair way to go. There doesn't need to be a conversation with the shopkeeper. 
There doesn't need to be a half hour conversation about trying to get in the keep when you end up just bribing the guy anyway. So, something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a skill we need to work on as a party. Yeah. I think I think I'm going to name it just cutting to the fat. Cutting to the fat. You want to cut to the good bits. Yeah. So definitely. for example, we want to talk to the Duke, but the guard is not letting us pass. You can say yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to pass. Um, if you just want to suggest some things you want to try to get around this person, um, do a roll and see how well you are. Or just just cut that guard bit out and just say, you, you go in. You go in, right? If you feel like it's unnecessary mm. to have all that part that part in there. You just go in and then you talk to the whoever you need to talk to. Yeah, and, I, that's definitely... Sorry, sorry, continue. Sorry, go. Um, and then have like have all the interesting npcs like if you have throwaway npcs because you know you haven't prepared enough fine but if you have actual you know storied npcs that you want to throw at the player just have them be at the place where the party's going like if you intended for this person to be at the bar but the party went to the park instead they're at the park now they're at the park now yeah, yeah that happens it, ha- it definitely happens I mean, uh, no, it was a mere coincidence that they were at the same point. I just, I think that's one of my personal issues when I DM, is that I find, <laughs> I find everything interesting. I find every little interaction interesting. I always want to explore it, which in small parties is great because everyone, everyone's, everyone's having fun. But it eats into so much time. Yeah. <laughs> like, where, where does the time go? Like, I mean, we did used to have longer sessions, but still, it took it takes a long time, and I'm okay with it. Mm. And I just hope the others will be okay with that as well, or it just might be different expectations, kind of thing. I mean, I think what I would suggest is that you can you can explore your little itty bitty bits that you want. But as soon as you get the feeling that the scene isn't going anywhere, I think you should just cut it. Like, mm. you should you should give it an out, give it a clean out, and then move on. And don't don't let it don't let it play out until it fizzles out, you know what I mean? And waste another twenty minutes. Okay. On that note, would you rather, when we do character switching, that we finish the scene before we move on to the next one, or we we quit we continue hot swapping between the two? Or the three or four or five? different scenes. yeah i was thinking about this i think if it's a very important scene to the characters or something like that um probably should let it play out like if it's let a it, it, it if it's a if it's a conversation like an important conversation uh i would like no ad breaks in the conversation you catch my meaning <laughs> I got uh, but you. if it if it's like a player like goes to one area does a thing and then travels to another area i think it's a good to cut it where they're traveling to the next area because that has it's yep, like yep, it's yep. a good like break there's dead time anyway, there's, there's yeah. dead time there but if there's like crucial scene like a bar fight or obviously you have to go case by case it's not simple cut and dry like if there's yeah, a bar there's fight no, there's no and there's case. players in the other area and they like they notice and um they run they start running towards the bar fight um where the other players are um i think that might be an exception to cut in between players because you're having simultaneous action and it's technically yeah. the same scene even though it's not in the same place. It's like connected. I agree. Uh, but like completely disconnected, unrelated scenes. I think you should try and keep them as whole as possible. But obviously if a scene is going for way too long, like it's an important scene, but it's going for way too long, I think you should definitely cut it like yeah i don't have a clear answer on this i think i would prefer that the scene be run out to be run as a whole as a whole thing and not be cut up as much as possible but again there are there are situations and scenarios where that is just not practical so but yeah case keep, by case yeah keep case by case but keep them whole preferably but you just make a decision you know when you play it there Okay. Um, so there's one little thing that I forgot, and then we'll cut it after that. Uh, how long will we be? Is there anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. Um, we're going for maybe an hour and a half now. Yeah, 
just one thing I wanted to touch on in terms of saving time. I noticed that you, um, like say for example, we say we head towards the tavern. I noticed that you, you often you're like, okay, you guys are in front of the tavern. What do you do? Obviously we're going to go in the tavern. There's no need for you to ask that. What are we going to do when we're outside the tavern? We're in, we're going to go in the tavern. We said we're heading towards the tavern. Good point. Yeah. I noticed you, I noticed you do that. You like, you stop us right outside the location and you're like, what do you guys do? Oh, we, we keep going. We keep going. Unless if it's really, yeah. if you really weren't clear on what we were doing or like if there was like, we finished a conversation with the NPC, what are we going to do? Sure. But if we're like, we say we head towards the tavern. Now, obviously we're going to go towards the tavern. Just keep that going. I think that's remnants of a bad habit or just a habit I used to have when I had to push roleplay at every opportunity I could. Yeah. But now I guess it's it's just kind of around. So yeah, I'll definitely try and work on that. Good point. Good point. Let me write that down. Cool. Um. Anything else? Is there anything you particularly wanted to touch on? Uh, there's one last thing, and it'll take like two minutes tops. Yeah. So. Um, I had a plan. I had it planned where you guys step into the city mm -hmm. and you guys, you take in, you take in the atmosphere, you take in the air, uh, the fresh scent of adventure kind of thing. And I completely figured, you completely slipped my mind, honestly, that you guys were going to level up at that point. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, yeah, Ooh. I forgot to tell you guys to level up. Um, so you're all level nine now. Congratulations. You might want to put that in the, the, I will. the Discord I will. so we can do that. And then we'll re we're ready for the next session so we're not wasting yes. time there we have yeah. so little time to run sessions now what uh, happened to the six hour sessions what happened to the 12 hour all day sesh where'd the time go <sighs> we gotta we gotta organize uh, another all day sesh maybe this christmas or so i'm down for that that'll be fun i we never we never got to have an all day sesh quite like the only session like hmm. we like just in terms of length alone we never really had a session like that and that went from 12 to 12 yeah that was, no i think it was 12 to 12. 10 hour session technically oh, 2 to 12 because we we ate we ate oh, we had lunch, we had lunch and then then we played oh that was a fun session yeah that was a fun session ah uh, good sessions all right we should we should stop it here okay um thanks for listening to our podcast uh catch us next time where we have uh, our first guest on the podcast. Yes, sir. Um, so get excited for that. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week, probably. Yeah, we're Far Kingdoms. See ya. See ya.